Welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast, where we discuss dynasty strategy, rankings, and all things NFL. So get ready to geek out on fantasy football with your host, Rich Dotson. And welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm Rich Dotson. He's Matt O'Hara. Hey, hey. He's Garrett Price. How's it going? Rocking that Browns glass. That's right. He's Jared Wackerly, hidden in the corner because we only put the handsomest people on the screens. Look at that. <laughs> Rich was totally back this this week with the, um, and remember last week? Oh, I know. <laughs> Did you see him grab that mic and just I know. freaking Confident. own it? This ain't no motherfucking pee. I was dying last week. I know you were. I feel better this week. Even though, like, today I've been so busy. The whole second show is just like. I would say, did it, I, I kind of want to watch footage from the second he show. He just, like, stopped talking. Yes. He was just like. <laughs> it's on YouTube. Dude, back. I thought it was going to. I felt. <laughs> it's on YouTube. Is it on YouTube? <laughs> yeah. Like, that morning I started feeling a little bit show? better. And then I did or that show. Oh. Yeah. I had two free shows now. Dude, by the second show, like, I was. And I felt worse the next day because yeah, of all the energy I put into up. it. Yeah, you're up late. I was sick for, like, a week, man. It's unbelievable. Oh, terrible. I'm glad you're back. Yeah, drinking will do that. Too. Terrible, terrible. I'm back, baby. Talking mm-hmm. Dynasty, and we're covering the 2024 headlines. Like, going to the 2024, like, what are some of the headlines? Th- things that we need to think about in Dynasty. Burped. Rich, we don't you? Yeah. Hold on. Didn't you say you never get hungover? I don't get hungover. <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he was legitimately it sick. It counts. I had a cold, dude. Eh. Eh. I wasn't hung over. I had a cold. My throat would hurt. That's all it was. I couldn't talk. I had a cough and hung over. Eh. When you get when you got syphilis, did I tell you you're hung over? <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, I never told it. I never told hey, you you're hung over. I was drinking. <laughs> I told you that in confidence. Sorry, your hair's falling out. <laughs> Is your hair falling uh, out? No more tummy yeah, your hair for fall- you. Dude, yeah. You know the whole uh the whole European wig thing? Like all the big white wigs? It's because all had syphilis. And they had to hide their heads. Good lord! Yeah, and your like skin starts to get fall out and stuff. Yeah, your hair falls out. You get all these like blotches on your hair. Oh, yeah. So the whole European movement, why they had wore those big white wigs, yeah. is because they all had syphilis. So like George Washington, syphilis. George Washington, I thought I had wasn't his hair real? Oh, was it? Yeah, mm-hmm. I thought so. I never met him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he didn't wear a wig. He just had that wooden teeth, that fake, real. That was fake. Fake. Right? Yeah. Yes, wooden teeth. He had like I think he had pig's teeth and stuff yeah. though. Like like or yeah, like, fake teeth, not fake wooden teeth. teeth. He had a lot of weird teeth. things. Yeah. Anyway, 2024 he was like six, headlines. He was like 6'4", and he was also like one of the richest Americans of all time. Yeah, he would fit in today's society. Mm-hmm. Arguably the greatest president of all time, George Washington. It's, yeah. He said it And arguably the first. Abraham yeah. Lincoln was pretty good. Boom. Then I mean, then. he did a couple of good things. <laughs> all right. Uh, up there. So we want to talk about, these aren't, some of these coincide with NFL headlines. Some of these don't, because we just care about what this means for Dynasty. So we're so, we're like, gonna go through Tay Tay Tay. I mean, that is a headline. <laughs> Kim Kardashian. <laughs> that is a headline. Yeah. Uh, so let's get to arguably both one of the biggest dynasty discussions, but it's also a huge one in the NFL right what now. What to do with Travis Kelsey and Tay Tay? I mean, that is kind of in here, low key. Is it? Uh, I'm number bar- nine. I barely, I barely read this. Number nine. The show off the road. <laughs> number nine. Is okay. Oh, yeah, you're right. It uh, is an afterthought on that one. Yeah. All right. Got to talk about a little bit underdog here. A little new thing that going on. Uh, underdog fancy pick them champions. Dynasty nerds in Alabama, Tennessee, Wyoming, and Mississippi. This one is for you. Underdog has launched a brand new game called pick them champions just for you. It's a new player versus player pick them game. That's all about strategy and fun. Choose two to five players, place your entry, and if your pick hits, you win big. When new users deposit $10 or more on Underdog, they will match your deposit up to $100. You will also receive a free promo code for us for a free year of the Dynasty GM and the Nerd Herd Bundle. And what a great time to have it because that gives you access to all our tools, all our rookie breakdown content, the Nerd Score, and the Dynasty Nerds Film Room, and everything else we offer for the Dynasty Nerds memberships. And for our current Nerd Herd members, we'll give you that cool, great, most comfortable shirt in the world, guaranteed to increase your high five intake, the Dynasty Nerds t-shirt waiting just for you. So click the link in the podcast description, head to Underdog Fantasy, use the promo code NERDS, and deposit at least $10 to start playing our new Pick'em Championship game. Then be on the lookout for your Dynasty Nerds promo code within 24 hours of your deposit. New members only. 
Again, that is promo code nerds at underdog fantasy. Okay. But the number one question right now, who do the Bears go with that quarterback? Do they draft Caleb Williams? Do they not? Do they stick with Justin Fields? And ultimately, what does this mean for the Bears organization? And what does this mean for potentially Justin Fields being on another team? So how does this whole thing shake out? Yeah, it's 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 confusing. I I won't sit and say anything as a fact. Mm-hmm. Um, Where are those crystal balls, man? There they are. Say, there they are. That's say you're mouthing it like we're not on video. I know. I forgot we're like, on video because because <laughs> usually at our second show we're not. Alcatraz. <laughs> Alcatraz. <laughs> uh, Jared. Jared. And Jared's going. What? <laughs> no, put your pants back on. <laughs> those are some big balls. Uh, Serby McGurvy. <laughs> He's like holding both hands. <laughs> Juggling this is this titties. Or I don't. Something. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> Any hands? Oh, but you got a mouth. Man. So if you're not first or last. Go ahead, Rich. If I'm the GM, of the Bears, I am. I am seeing. I'm definitely putting out there. To see what my return is on the one one. Mm, I, I have to do the due diligence there because when I look at Justin Fields and I do like his upside a ton, and I like the idea of like in a lot of draft capital put an actual offensive line around them. And they, they have some really good upside offensive line players there. They were hurt this year, so the offensive line wasn't good this year because mm-hmm. a lot of those guys were hurt and had some good rookies there. But they used some of that capital there in the build around him and definitely had another good receiver to him so you don't have to throw to um, Turdfergs uh, all day. But you know the facts are you know Ju- Justin Fields does hold on the ball a little bit longer than he should. He has 11 and 28 record. Um, he's been banged up here and there in his third year already. He's only averaging 200 passing yards a game. And you have a chance to probably get a, you know, potentially what some consider a generational quarterback and a guy like uh, Caleb Williams, or even potentially Drake may. We'll see how this all uh, pans out. So, and you would probably get a second round pick back for Justin Fields. So it's not like you're not gonna get anything there. And they also have the number nine overall pick yeah. as well. But to come away with even more draft capital uh, and ha- and be have all those guys on rookie contracts with all those shots in the in the barrel, it does give you opportunity to build a super team. Mm-hmm. But all teams are revolved around the quarterback. You know, like if, if you don't have Joe Flacco, you're not going anywhere. So for me, what do I think is going to happen? I think they end up right now, as of today, uh, January 9th, I think they end up trading Justin Fields and. Drafting, drafting Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams. Okay. If I'm the GM, I would love to find a way to possibly keep Justin Fields and build around him. But that rookie contract we sent it for th- three years is kind of hard to pass up as well. And they already do have a lot of draft capital. So it's tough to go either way, but I would lean today. They draft the quarterback. This one, this one's so multi-layered and difficult, right? Mm-hmm. Cause I mean, they, they made some moves. They got, they solidified their defense, right? The defense is, I think, headed in the right direction. It greatly improved over the second half of the season. Right. And and now they have extra high draft capital, right? And a quarterback that's, at times, looked like the part. Mm-hmm. At times, he doesn't. Sure. So, so what, do you, what do you do with that as a general manager? Do you, do, you, do you just say, hey, this is our guy. I think I've seen flashes, enough flash. Or, or as a good GM, do you dive into the player's that are coming in and kind of evaluate them versus who you have. I think that's what you have to you do. You have to do that. And, and I don't know that they're I, – because I myself haven't – I haven't – Sure. D- 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 dove, dove in. Dove. I haven't dove in. I haven't divin in <laughs> to these guys enough to make this informed decision. I think this will crystallize in the next few weeks for us while, sure. we, while we start kind of doing this, um, going through our processes. Uh but, but from what I've seen uh, of Justin Fields, I think it would be hard to pass up re- hitting the reset button uh, on the rookie contract. But at the same time, the defense might be good enough to win. So, right. so if you can get some pieces around Justin Fields, and if you think Justin Fields is the guy, um, I think you stay with him. So right now, I'm very much on the fence. I'm still in in kind of la la land with. And this one other the layer to add to this is it's not only who are you taking, it's who you're passing up to. Right. And that's potentially Marvin Harrison Jr., who could be an all-world receiver. So you have the the financials, yeah, which which are definitely part of it. But you also have the total makeup of the team. And when are you going to find a a player at the wide receiver position of that caliber? Probably never. Right. 
Uh, so there, there where is, is there, where is their second pick? It's their second nine. picks at nine. Nine, okay. So, so they, they, they slid him, back quite a bit. But yeah. they could get a Malik Neighbors there. Maybe yeah. they could get you know. I I would love to who has declared seven. by the way officially mm-hmm. yeah, Malik Neighbors. Yep. I would love to find a way to get because I think they're going to be terrible next year as well. I would love to get find a way for New England to move from three to one. And hey, just give me like not even be over like greedy if I can. It's like hey, give me your first, give me your third this year, and give me your first next year because I think they're gonna have a high first next yeah. year as well. Because I would want to make sure I got Marvin Harrison Jr. Yep, and I'll use that one nine on the best offensive tackle or you know the player that I can get there. So then I have two first go next year, probably another high first. Have Justin Fields with a receiver he does have familiarity with to go with Cole Komet and T.J. Moore. You get another offensive tackle to go with your or offensive lineman to go with the offensive line you have. That's a good offense to go with that good defense it's a great right out the, out the the bat. And if you feel like Justin Fields could take you where you need to go to go there with a, where you're going to pay the quarterback, you will be diversified elsewhere with so many rookie contracts of talent. And you have a guy like Marvin Harrison Jr. You're paying for five years on a rookie deal so, as well. So I I I think that's a dream scenario, right? If they yeah. do decide to do that, I think that's a dream scenario. In that dream scenario. What do you do with a guy like DJ Moore, who I just said is the most improved player from a year before? If he does get an alpha dog, a true alpha dog wide receiver along with him, how do you guys treat him? In, in, I guess in Dynasty, uh, I, I think he, I think it becomes what we've seen from a lot of teams lately with Jamar Chase and T Higgins and Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill. One guy will emerge as probably the alpha player. Probably first year, it'll probably still be DJ Moore, but Imagine. obviously Marvin Harrison Jr. will take that pretty quick. But you know, it's it's worked for a lot of teams. I, I don't think I don't think they would hesitate as much doing that as much as they they would used to. And for fantasy purposes, I think I would still like maybe it's a slight nick, yeah. But it goes from a wide receiver one to wide receiver sixteen for me or something like that. So let's let's just say this scenario plays out the way you guys just said it. They get another high draft pick next year and maybe they stink also for a, another year and Justin Fields isn't the guy. In this scenario, they have their pick next year, which theoretically will be high and possibly New England's, which also could set up to be quite high as well. Have you guys this is a Jared and Garrett question. Is next year's draft class have you guys looked ahead to that at all? A little bit. I mean, Quinn Ewers is going to be there, right? I mean, you, Ewers and, and Shador Sanders are two of like the biggest names in next year's class. Because um, I feel like these are conversations that they're having within that building. They have to have these kind of conversations before they make any sort of move, right? Right, right, absolutely. Uh, potentially, depending on what McCarthy does. Okay. Um, he's another one that could be in next year's class, yeah. too. There isn't really a, a, a guy, like a yeah. Or guys, Drew like Aller Jake is like one of the bigger names, but yeah. but you're yeah. not you're not passing up a Caleb Williams. You know, right now it doesn't Caleb look Williams like there's a Caleb Williams for for or Drake May. No. for or not Drake another yeah. correct Caleb Williams or Drake May. Yeah, I mean, I mean there are there Drake are guys that there are guys that come out obviously every year kind of out of the blue to to surprise and, and for do sure better Joe than Burrow yep. did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's plenty of guys that do that, but um, so it's possible. But th- you you can only deal with what you know right now. Right, right. Uh, right. So okay, I was just, well, I I was just well, we got the air. I gotta ask you guys about that uh, Quinshawn Judkins kid. So okay, that just committed to Ohio State. We'll do it off at there though, because I got I, I was like, dude, should they get here? I gotta ask him how if he really is that good. Yeah. So well, there's well, two. There's I think there's two or three film cut ups of him on our film room. You can check those out. But I mean, he's he's damn good. I mean, he's probably the best SEC running back past year, even maybe his freshman year too. So he's good pretty for good. Ohio State. He's baby. pretty good. He's a physical right. guy. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Henderson now. This definitely makes me lean towards he's well, probably I, going I, out. I don't make it assume. As soon as he said he, I'm going there, that they knew Travion was coming out. That's what I'm guessing. That's a great boost. That's what I would assume. But There's no way he goes there if Travion Henderson's going back. I wouldn't think so, but you never know. So yeah. so what do you think about Chicago? What's your So so I do want to bring up this this scenario too and talk about this because I, I do want to talk about how do we feel about Justin Fields if he's not with Chicago. Mm. Well, if he gets traded, sure. You know, how do we feel about him as a you know potential buy or sell on either side of this right now? How much risk are we willing to take? Do we think there's much risk? Uh, there's a lot of conversation because to me, in my head, if he stays in Chicago, obviously we know roughly what we're getting. Uh, he he's shown that he can be a top five or six type of quarterback when healthy. He has been banged up a little bit, which does concern me, uh, but. When healthy, he's he's been baller. He's been absolutely awesome. 
if you go somewhere else, that adds in a layer of complexity. You don't know exactly how that's going to play out. But I would have to imagine in my mind, most of the teams, maybe not all of them, but most of the teams that are going to pay for him are probably feeling like they're a quarterback away. You know, an Atlanta team comes to mind. Uh, a Minnesota team comes to mind. Dream, I mean, dream scenarios are that you, he would go to Atlanta with Mike Vrabel as head coach. Oh, are geez. you, are you, I mean, are you, are you going out to acquire him as the last piece? Has he proven that he can be that last piece? I feel like he is, if he's getting traded, he's almost a guy that. It could go either way. Yeah. It could, but like he, like but he, usually, he's going to get, he's on that, I'm on my second chance. He's in that pile. Not but, like I'm here to save your to franchise. To me, most of the guys that are lower end, they're just going to draft somebody. Yeah. Like why, why bring Justin Fields in when I have the chance to just draft you know, what, May or, or Penix. Or, maybe you do it if you if you miss out on one of those guys. Maybe. And, maybe, that, and, and that is a possibility. Teams, you know I mean? Some of the teens are a little bit later. It's definitely possible that, you know, out of the blue, the Tennessee Titans decide that they want to trade for him or, yeah. you know, what because the, whoever the new coaches loves him. Or, yeah, sure. That's well, in the realm of possibility. Talking about, if he goes to Atlanta, then you could say he's arguably in a better situation. You could. he goes to Tennessee, then he's in a worse situation. Right, right. Um, so, so there is some risk here involved in this. So... I was curious of your guys' thoughts on if you're doing a startup today, what, do you still take Justin Fields in the same spot that you would have otherwise? Do you factor in that risk of him going to a different team? Uh, it's just, it's one of the most up in the air situations that's really, really yeah. hard to nail down. He was, I mean, before the season, he was going where? I mean, top. He was top going eight? like. Top eight quarterbacks off the board, right? Yeah, he in the first round yeah. typically. Where were you asking? What what month? Like, like, like beginning yeah. of the season. I mean, he was. I feel like he was back at back half of the first round. He, he was, was top uh, eight, QB typically. ten. Yeah. Okay. QB yeah. ten. All right. So Early would that have, would have slid into the second round then? Mid second. Yeah. Mid second. Okay. Around Dak and Tua. I mean, are you asking? Is he still there? Yeah. Or like, would still you still? Him? Would you still draft him in the middle of the second right no, now? Absolutely not. Would there's, you, too, there's too much going on. Um. It just depends who else is on. It depends on the quarterback run, right? Where, like where was where was there. where was a guy that we were talking about last year, Purdy? Where was he going at the beginning of the season? That oh. I mean, he had been going late, way late, yeah. way late. Um, so yeah. I mean, I, so I mean, I mean I'm definitely I, taking Purdy. Ahead I think of the point, in but August, the point is, some of those guys maybe that August yeah. Purdy was mid third QB fourteen. Okay, but back in like June, May, he was yeah. in like the eighth, ninth. Some of those guys, I think, have jumped him. So naturally, sure, Stroud, gonna, yeah, Stroud jumped him. Absolutely, some of those guys are going to naturally. Jordan Love jumped him. Yeah. Ooh, not for me. No, you would take Jordan Love ahead of QB Justin six, Fields six or seven or something on the I season. I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. I would. Jordan Love looks absolutely fantastic. He finished He's quarterback five on a year. He's five. got a young receiver course. Some of the ball. I mean, people are sitting here going jumping up and down about the ball placement of CJ Stroud. You know, these last five six weeks, mm -hmm. Jordan Love's ball placements and balls have been absolutely tremendous. I mean, Alcatraz balls. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I th Jordan Love he took a he took a massive jump in my rankings. Like I moved up a lot. In my Superflex rankings, I have I would I feel very comfortable taking Jordan Love in the second round of a Superflex league mm -hmm. ahead of a lot of um, a lot of these guys. I mean, I feel let me put it this way: I feel just as good about Jordan Love as I do about Tua, if not even slightly better. To be honest with you, I feel. I mean, who'd you rather have Jordan Love or Trevor Lawrence? I mean, I'd still lean Trevor Lawrence, but like now you're. I mean, that's, that's what you're talking about. Jordan but Love has looked. I think absolutely that's that's terrific. that's based less off of things you've seen and more off of past biases, right? Taking tr taking Trevor Lawrence above love. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, to be fair, like looking back at some of Trevor Lawrence's tape, somebody put a good tweet out like, um, God, who was? I wish I'd give him credit. But like of how close Trevor Lawrence was to scoring like so many more points for touchdowns. Like how many of his balls were like receivers just didn't get a foot down or something along those lines. So, I mean, I listen, Trevor Lawrence is definitely taking a step back. But That's I still every quarterback. Yeah. I mean, every quarterback Long misses term. out on a lot of stuff. But for me, for Jordan Love, I mean, yeah, he he's a young quarterback I believe in who's got all his weapons that he's going to be building. Wicks has looked good. Dubs look good. Watson's look good. Jaden Reed's look good. We haven't seen Luke Musgrave yet. So, like, he's got five weapons in there that he gets to work with for a long term. Yep. And his, again, he has looked Fantastic, and he's gonna get a long-term deal here next year. He's on mm -hmm. one year. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. That I would try and lock him up this year because those deals only get more expensive, and it's probably the cheapest you'll be able to get him. Probably. I have no problem extending that deal, making a five-year deal, and if it's say it's twenty million guaranteed next year, give him a hundred million 
guaranteed. Yeah. You know, some of those lines. I think he's looked tremendous. I think, um, I think he's proven that he's their guy. Yeah, so for me, him coming in on a year that we were somewhat questioned about, we didn't know the receiving court, finished as quarterback five this year, his first year in the offense, 100%. Like, I high in the second round. Like, he's he's in that room, like, you had the couple receivers, like CeeDee Lambs, Jamar Chase, mm-hmm. um, and Justin Jefferson. But I would take Jordan Love in a super flex startup over every single running back. So over Bijan, over Brees. Yeah. I would take Jordan Love over all those guys. Every tight end. That's a real that's that's how high he's jumped for me. I'm looking at December ADP for nerd the nerd ADP that we have on the spreadsheet. And uh Love is at QB sixteen. Which Too is low. like back into the fourth. So that was from what? I, that, that that's is, from December. I mean, so that's a huge value. Way too low. I yeah, would assume January is going to be higher since he's played so. well in December. Yeah. I would give up. I would like if I had to give up. I'm trying to think here. Like on top of two first for Jordan Love and a super flex. Like what kind of player value? Like a like a Baker Mayfield. Um, possibly. I feel like it's looks that's a little much. You, at the same time with those two first, you might want to just roll with Baker. Um, QB ten. Yeah. So I'm trying to think of like a quarterback like in that that realm like Jordan Love or Kyler Murray. You know, I would take Jordan Love over Kyler Murray. Jordan Love or uh Deshaun Watson. I think you're going to get a lot more Jordan Love. Yeah, Jordan Love for sure. Easily. I think you're going to get a lot more consistent play out of a guy like Jordan Love. Yeah. I mean Jordan Love or Dak. 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 That's cl- and that's close because it's, it's the just, age. It's there. the age. It's it's yeah. it's and that matters when you're getting quarterback cuz you're talking if you can get 12 years. That's I can I I can't I say in the podcast all the time when people say, oh, two years. Like, how long two years is in playing dynasty? Like, oh, I got two years left. Like, that's twenty. That's two seasons, back-to-back ships. Like, Dak, that's legend Dak's mode. 30, loves 25. I mean, how many people listen haven't even been in a 10-year, a, a dynasty league for 10 years? I, like, I like, would I know, say easily half. Yeah, we've easily. been in a league for going on 19 years uh, mm-hmm. together. I have a league that's going in, like, year 12. I mean, shit, dude. Some of the original nerd herd leagues are going in year Somebody asked the other day in 2.0, Nerd Herd 2.0 is going in year seven. Wow. Uh, the original Nerd Herd League is going in like year eight or nine. So even those leagues, like, that's why people love the Nerd Herd Leagues because they're so consistent. Like there's mm-hmm. no turnover. Um, they're always forever. So like people, like to have that in your back pocket. I, I talk about how I had Drew Brees as my quarterback for 15 years. And I'm just like, he was my starting quarterback on my team who I put in there every single week for 15 years. How nice is that to not even have to worry? Invaluable, yeah. like it's in, and it, and it helps you build so much because you don't have to. It's a position you don't have to worry. Like they right. have, it's not just you don't think about it. Like when you play dynasty, like oh, like I get a I get to start this player for fifteen years or ten years. Let's go like sure. for ten years. How that's invaluable in its own right. It's also invaluable because now you get to go elsewhere in your rookie drafts right. to go and grab like oh I don't need to grab this quarterback here when there's this tier I can grab this player and you can keep shooting your shot at those tight ends and those receivers and those running backs because that position is filled up. for 10 years. Now, you always say the best player available, but when you're in a tier and you're you're going which way, like right now, if you have B. John Robinson and Brees Young or Brees Hall, then you can go a different way when that tier is close. You can go sure. the receiver, or maybe you can grab the Sam Laporta instead of grabbing the Devon H. Han. You know what I mean? Which are both great players, but now you locked up a premium one there. Sure. So. For me, getting a guy like Jordan Love and getting those little extra years on top of Dak, it does hold weight in my eyes when they're close. And I know Dak finished as quarterback three overall, but when you're talking about a points per game where Dak Prescott scoring 20.7 and Jordan Lo- Jordan Love is scoring 19.4, that's way more important to me than where they're finishing me. So Jordan Love, to me, if, if people are valuing him as quarterback 16, is one of the best super flex buys you can possibly buy. Sure. It'd be what's an overpay today is an underpay tomorrow. Hey, Dynasty Nerds listeners, want to extend your fantasy football season? Jump into the FFPC Playoff Challenge and grab a chance to win up to $500,000. With two thrilling options, enter the $200 challenge for a half million grand prize or try the $35 challenge for a $100,000 grand prize. It's easy. Just pick 12 players, one from each playoff team, to fill your lineup of one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, one tight end, four flex, one kicker, and one defense. No draft, no salary cap. Remember, the contest locks at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday, January 13th. 
So head to myffpc.com, use our special promo code NERDS, and receive $25 off your entry. Don't miss this chance to keep the fantasy football thrill alive. Go to myffpc.com and take your best shot at either the $100,000 or the massive $500,000 grand prize. Remember, use the promo code NERDS for $25 off. All right, let's get into the next one here. Headline, this one is more of a dynasty headline, not necessarily a NFL headline. And NFL headline? A it's, that's always a weird one to me because yeah. whenever the sound whenever, yeah, would say an A, but it's an abbreviation, and I always put an AN in front of abbreviation. Like, this is my pick, or an, an MVP candidate. An, an MVP. Uh, yeah, well, an N is like an E sound. Eh. Yeah. So it sounds like it should be N. Anyway, <clears throat> all that to be said, let's talk about running back twos that performed at the end of the season pretty darn well or throughout the season pretty darn well. So what are we doing with some of these guys that were looked at as backup running backs but showed us a little bit of something? When you so, say RB2, you're talking about backup running backs, right? Right, actual backup running backs in the NFL. But they emerged at some point during the season. So guys like Ty Chandler, Zamir White, Tajay Spears, Jalen Warren, Chuba Hubbard, Zach Charbonnet, guys like – We don't Chase have to Brown. stick to those ones specifically, Chase Browns. I am going to pick one. one of them – to be my breakout candidate, and then he's going to be on my list of biggest disappointments next year. Hey, there you go. Yeah. That's a good idea. How about that? How about Chuba? Stick with the same team. No. Oh, okay. That one hurts too much. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll be going with Zamir White. I already know it. Oh, okay. there you go. <laughs> done and done. On that list, there's one guy I absolutely love, um, and there's one guy I like a lot. Okay. The rest to me are all just what they whatever they were this year. Like Jalen Warren. Running back twenty two on the year in PPR leagues, like okay, good to have in your roster. Yeah. That's good, good to have, but he's not the starter, right? He's never going to be a starter, uh, in my eyes. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. Chuba Hubbard was it? You know, yeah, was he got named starter week nine? Mm-hmm. Was even a running back two the rest of the way. Uh, Zach Charbonnet, unfortunately, stuck behind Kenneth Walker. Kenneth Walker, like I've said since the draft day, more talented. More talented. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chase Brown will probably have an opportunity next year unless Joe Mixon can rework his contract again. And Joe Mixon has looked terrific. He's, yeah. he's played uh, really well. The back of the draft. He looked more explosive. And uh, they could even draft somebody too still. And they could. But Chase Brown looked better than I thought he would. Chase 100%. Brown has, has broken up some pretty explosive plays. He did. Yeah. Uh, what, and I, I, I say he was terrible. So, but to be fair, I got to me when he had to get short yardage at the goal line. I said, yeah. He, he he, he's not, a, he's not a true three down back. I don't think he ever will be. No. I think he's going to he's do. He's a Jalen Warren. Yeah, he's a, he's a guy. He, he's the Tony Pollard to a Zeke. He's the he's that type of guy. Same thing. Ty Chandler. He, he's better served at, as a backup running back. Time good good player. Guy. Flash some I, stuff. I liked Ty Chandler a decent amount. From what I saw, I was not bad. He's one of the guys on the list here that, even though I was a Zimmer White guy, if I had to choose between the two of them, I actually liked what I saw out of at a tie a little bit more than I liked out of Zimmer. The clear cut guy here. Who there's, is, there's one clear cut guy, yeah. Who is we got we're tiptoeing. You guys are just dancing around this guy. Is one that the community lashed out at us for. Lashed. Um a lot of bad comments. How many touchdowns when, did he score this past week? Two, <laughs> All of them. I don't know. <laughs> he looked fantastic. I think he had two touchdowns. Well, it was two. And you know, immediately after the after the NFL draft, we did immediate mock draft at the cabin. And we took him in the first round. We had Tajay Spears in the first round, and we got a lot of bad feedback. And it, we were like, okay, guys, it is what it is. Uh, we still like him. We still like his tape. And here we are. I I, I think Tajay Spears is worth a first-round pick. I think he absolutely was. He was much better than Kendrick this Miller. Year, he's worth a first-round pick. He was, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, if you wanted to trade him for a first, I would. I have done that. He's looked so good. <laughs> he, he has. He's looked really good in, in – in his opportunities, he's always made the most of them. He's he does things in the receiving game. He does things in the running game. And honestly, it, the the Mike Vrabel, I don't know if it was a firing or you know what it was exactly. Sounds they like departed. A, they parted it was a fire. It was a fire. Uh, yeah. Regardless of how it happened, that makes me feel good and bad in a way for the future of Tajay Spears. In one sense, I, I'm you're always a little nervous when there's a new head coach. Sure, you never know who's going to be their guy, who's not going to be their Just guy. See third round draft capital. Sure. From a running back. Who knows? But on the flip side, that also makes it seem 
incredibly less likely that Derrick Henry comes back and signs oh, he's a one-year deal. He said goodbye for this in team. the stadium. He did. He said he goodbye. Did. It's you don't say goodbye. You don't and come back. No. So I think it is. He is going to be the guy that has the first crack of the first opportunity at the shop, unless they go out and draft no, Travion they, listen, Henderson or something stupid not like that. Doing it. They have so so many holes. Many to fill. Hole. That offensive line is abysmal. That secondary is abysmal. They have a lot of work to do there. I cannot believe they got rid of Mike Vrabel. He is. Candy. I hope a he goes top to Columbus. Ten. Me too. Oh my god! I literally called Jared right after I saw it. I was like, "Dude, next Ohio State coach, right?" No. Yes. He's not going to Columbus because he's the number one. He's going to be the number one wanted NFL head coach. Number one, or Ben John, him or Ben John. Ben Johnson's the top um, top four running backs in our nerd score last year: Bijan, Gibbs, Achan, Spears. Yeah, it's a pretty good group. Yeah. That's I had. That's how I had him ranked. I had it: yep. Bijan, they Gibbs, pretty good this year. Achan, uh, Spears, and I was like, Spears is. I, I remember when I was done. You said you like Spears. I'm like I love Spears too. Like he's he's my fourth running back. He is a first round grade. Um, I had Achan. I always say, like, I had HN closer to Gibbs than I had right. Gibbs to Bijan. Same. In hindsight, you would have it, like, oh, they're all pretty damn I mean, HN's looked. He's looked unreal. I loved HN. I was probably. He's just ripping up I was, chunks. You could argue yeah. I was the highest HN nah, supporter. No, in the whole dynasty community. You both loved him a lot. We did. You both loved him a lot. So, I mean, Rich was the loudest about it. I was pretty loud about it. <laughs> He's loudest about <laughs> many things. So. Um, yeah, so for me, Tajay here is really like Tajay. I'm excited about. I'm really excited about Zamir if he gets an opportunity. Yeah, but again, you know, th- I think he's shown enough. Zamir has shown enough that yeah. he could be there. Did guy. you see? And what's good enough is Pierce is probably coming back as head coach. That's a big that's thing. That's what really helps dude. him a lot. Yeah. Zamir is so yoked. He is. He's, he's built like huge. a good guy. He's a big kid, dude. I didn't realize how much of a farm boy he is. They used to call him Zeus. Did you Zeus. see that uh, yeah. TikTok I sent you? Like, oh, yeah. Zamir White's press conference yeah. afterwards, dude. So humble and just, is he? Yeah, just he's a good dude. He yeah, always dude. was. We liked. We talked about we uh, talked his personality. About uh, when we brought kind of reminds too. me of the Nick Chubb that way. Yeah, like the, and it, and it's backs. Yeah, because yeah. we we've talked about so we liked him a lot on the show as well. We so did. the nerd herd probably has a lot of Zamir White shares. We thought he was dead in the water. I was losing faith. Thing. I was too. I was like, dang it, he's a jack. Yeah, he's a jack. He's yeah. never got an opportunity. Then, he would he would get two. You, you can't do anything two back like get, that, especially him. Yes, exactly. two Josh yards. I mean, two carries. Give me a freaking Josh break, McDaniels. man. Yeah, but he he did the most with his opportunity. Sucks. He At the looked, very he end, he swooped good. in and saved his dynasty value. So because after two years, you you really start giving up. So he got it in those last couple of weeks. He snuck it in. Yep. So and he catches passes um, pretty naturally as well. From what competent, I've seen, competent. You know yep. what I mean? Enough I wouldn't that, call him a weapon. No. But no, enough that you can. The box. I was gonna say, yeah, you can throw him the ball out of the backfield occasionally. Hey, oh crap, Zamir! You know what I mean? Like, right. and he'll catch it and and do something with it. But besides that, going to twenty twenty four, there's there's nothing here that really, yeah, you know, straightens my noodle. Yeah, and and it is something that you, you never know where some of these guys, you know. Right after you said, I was gonna say pop out, but you, know, <laughs> you just gotta watch. I didn't. You gotta I didn't. watch what you say yeah, sometimes because yeah. it just doesn't. Come on, Polo G, let's get it. Yeah. All right. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. Uh, big storyline a couple weeks ago. Obviously, we haven't been talking about it as much because they haven't made the playoffs and things like that. But the guy that was having a a relatively good fantasy football season, relatively good actual season, gets benched in Russell Wilson. Ooh. What happens here? Because this one's weird. There's a lot of money on the table here. Is are his days in Denver done? If so, where does he go? How like how does this all work? Because honestly, I have no idea how this all plays out. Den- Denver right now is projected to be the fourth lowest in cap space. They're at negative nineteen million dollars. We all know that this really doesn't mean anything, but they're going to have to clear some space somewhere, right? Right. And Russ has got. A, a really weird contract, right? Right. They didn't play him at the end of the year because they didn't want to give him money that would basically, if he got injured, then he'd be guaranteed next year's salary, all sorts of crap. He counts $37 million against the cap next year. He's got like $85 million worth of dead money. I was going to say, how do they get rid of him? I, I have no idea why they didn't play him because they can't get rid of him. I mean, Sean Payton came out and said, yeah, like somebody asked him, is there a scenario where Russ is back next year? Yeah. Because he's got eighty-five million dollars worth of dead right. money. Yeah, there's a there's a scenario. They need to trade him 
who, which, who the hell is going to want this contract? It's going to be the second time Denver is going to have to give away a quarterback along with a draft pick to guy to get a guy off their right. books like they did with Brock Osweiler because that's the only way in my mind that, that they're going to that it's going to happen. But then they say if they, it's if, well, they if they by not playing them and just cut them now they just eat the thirty seven like it's just yeah, thirty seven million on the hook for thirty seven million for this year. That's it though. And then twenty twenty four the twenty twenty five then they're out. They're good. They'd be hit, still hit with a dead cap hit, though. The dead cap hit of $85 million would accelerate next year. I mean, it, it, yeah. Next year they're screwed, though, but then they get out of it. After 2024, yeah, yeah. they get out of it. So I think yep. they're. I think what they're going to do here is Just reset, eat it, eat it $85 million. And be done for one. Or $87 million or whatever. Well, first of all, when you're, it's, your it, owner owns Walmart, $85 million sure. is like me spending $8.50. That's like, but that's like. That's cap jail. Like, how the hell? You have to get under the cap. You have to find that cap relief somewhere. You're going to have to cut a shitload of You'll other You'll have people. to cut everybody. Like, everyone's gone. Yeah, then it's gone. Your, your team is dead. It's rookies. Yeah. Well, I mean, your team still... If he stayed, there's no difference. If it's, he stayed... I still, mean, it's it's more or less $50 million that they're going to they're, they're gonna have to find on that roster without him if they cut him. Well, they already because want to get 30, probably get a Because they're going to save the 37. They're going to get hit with the 85. And there's going to be around $50 million that they're going to have... Fifty plus the nineteen, they're already uh, they're already you know they're already passed. They're projected to be passed with him on the roster. They're gonna be over the cap nineteen million dollars. So that dude, you're looking at like seventy million bucks. You got to find. I think, the, I think the move is you just reset and you eat it for one year, and you're just done with. Kind of like Tom Brady, you just eat it and then move on. Dude, I guess Jared Siddham's your quarterback, and you move on. If, they, Josh if you Dobbs, can, if you can afford him, if Jake you can Brown, afford Stidham, Jake Brown and something along those lines, <laughs> you're gonna be getting rid of everybody, dude. That is going to be a wholesale then. I've been telling you guys forever, Russell Wilson's a turd. The thing so. is, he wasn't a turd this season. He was actually, he was a quarterback one oh, before. I'm just about him personally. He's just a turd. Right. Like nobody he, was a, he was a quarterback one before he got benched. Which makes it a weird move. Like, what's going on behind the scenes? What's that- weird is after the bye, after they just beat the Chiefs and come off a winning streak, they're like, hey, we need you to take a pay cut. That was, was weird. And that's confirmed. Like, Well, they wanted him to restructure the contract. To get rid of all this dead money, so they could get cut rid of him. Yeah, <laughs> he knows what's up. Yeah, uh huh. Oh, it's a weird situation. It, it's a mess. It's, it was it bad is. when they resigned him. They extended him when they didn't have to. Just the whole thing. The whole thing. Is you weird. know what? A mess. It is. Suck a mess. it, Denver. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it, Denver. You ruined my childhood. You totally tore my heart out when I was seven and eight. But it's okay. No, I feel bad for. I mean, listen, they won a couple of Super Bowls. They, they could did. stink for. This is my time. I wear a brown shirt every day until we lose. All my Denver fans are now like, dude, I hope that shirt's not on there next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> People get so mad when I say bad stuff about their football teams. Remember that guy got so mad about you when we talked about the Saints in their cap hell? Dude, by the way, they're projected oh, they're to be yeah. $75.9 million over the cap. 75 point. It's getting worse. Year after year. They well, keep, kick, they they keep, keep putting, kicking this can <laughs> down the road. And not only are they $76 million over the cap, their team's freaking old, dude. But they have Jameis Winston. And he's and they're tied the best to Derek Carr now. Yeah. By the way. Yep. And they didn't make the playoffs. <sighs> yep. In a crap division. And like Taysom Hill's guaranteed like eighteen million dollars, <laughs> dude. It's a mess. they're gonna do. They're just gonna restructure all those contracts and push those down the line too. That's what I said. Like, like I, I, I was I, I made notes on guys like Alvin Kamara. Like they 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 might get they he's got a chance to go. Carr they could they could actually get rid of Carr. If they they do them a post June first and save about ten ten million bucks, and they could get rid of Alvin Kamara and save about ten million bucks if he's a post a post June first cut, but what, what? you get rid of two of your best offensive weapons and you're still you're still fifty million dollars away from being under the cat. I don't know how the hell they do this. Yeah, Jared They'll sent it over. It's even they get rid of uh, the post June, post June first release for Russell Wilson. They pay him thirty. They pay him thirty nine million in twenty twenty four. Yeah. 35.424 dead cap, 49.625 dead cap. So they that's would, two years of like. They would have to do it post June 1st to kind of spread it because there's, no there's no way you could take a 50 But still, million but dollar. still, you screw yourself for two years yeah. then. Yeah. And, yeah. You'd have to find like the Baker Mayfield quarterback for like. I think might not even I be able to find that. I think they're saying. It's worse if they do it post June because they still have to pay him thirty seven. They're just gonna bite the billet, bullet on the eighty five if they do it before and save that thirty seven. Good. Lord. Just be done with it. Yeah. Third bad year. It's a weird situation. Dynasty wise, Russ Wilson. I mean, I'd rather have. I'll, I'll tell you what. Arizona was playing. They're playing with the same fire. Was Russell with, even with that Kyler? contract as well with Kyler? 
it, that one's a weird one as well. If if for whatever reason they sour on him, they're going to be in the same hell that that Denver's in right now. Some of these contracts got real funky, man. I'd rather have uh, Kyler Murray than Russell Wilson. Why wouldn't yeah. they just try? Well, what happens if uh, Call of Duty comes out though, Rich? With Russell Wilson, yeah. <laughs> a new Call of Duty comes out because he doesn't play within the structure. I, I I said this a year ago on the podcast. The reason why Seattle got rid of him, I've said this twenty times on the podcast, is. Russ Wilson went to the management and everything. Again, him. Remember when he first got Denver, he had his own office and stuff. He thinks he's above the team. He thinks he's better than he is. He thinks that him and Sierra are Jay Z and Beyonce. And he kept going to the coaching staff saying, "Hey, I could be Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. Let me do it." And they're like, "No, play within the confines of the offense. Play how you play. We can win Super Bowls. We did." And he's like, "No, I could do more." The problem is. He plays outside the offense he's supposed to play in. Sean Payton's not having it. You know what I mean? He does what he wants. He thinks he can do it. He thinks he's better than he is. If he plays within the system he's supposed to play in, he's a competent quarterback. He can get the job done. He's obviously won a Super Bowl, taking a team to a Super Bowl. Uh, he He's not an incompetent, like he's not an incapable quarterback. Incapable. Yeah. Incapable. Uncapable. He thinks he's better than he is and can play outside I mean, of structure. When you hear his former cannot. teammates talk about him, it is it's weird. Yeah, they they don't they don't love him. Nobody likes him. I I he's my Rich least doesn't like him. He's we my know Rich least like him. favorite player he's not of genuine. all time. He's the capital D douche. He's a politician. Yeah, politicians are douches too. Sorry if you're a politician. You might not be the one, but most of you are. Sixty <laughs> percent of the time, it works every time. So what's the next? Thing? All right, what's the next thing? Because we we don't know what's going to happen with Russ. No one knows what happened. What's going to happen to Russ? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Because they got some big time dollar decisions to this make. Could be a capital D. Hey guys, let me tell you about our friends at Sleeper. Guess what? Our app is the mini is live Woo. on Sleeper right now. The Dynasty so GM. Pretty. You can use the analyzer. That you can use nice. the. Uh, the, the trade calculator, and my favorite thing is the inbox, right, where all your trades from all your sleeper leagues are right there. You can actually push trades through the actual sleeper app. And right now, we could be more excited to be partners with them. And right now, if you don't know, they are doing DFS. And I know how many people that play Dynasty play DFS as well. And right now, there's not a better place to play DFS than sleeper. They're offering up to 100 times their, your entry, the highest payout in the whole DFS market Right now, you can track your fantasy players and your sleeper picks in real time. All you got to do is choose two to eight of your favorite players from pregame, live in-game, or even across different sports. Pick more or less than the predicted stats, and only on sleeper, you can get up to 100 times your payout. You can share with your friends and get rewarded together. Make sure you use that promo code NERD so our friends know that friends sent them their way. Oh, um, no way. <laughs> and get your deposit match and have Lindsay. a good time. You know, have all your DFS, all of your fantasy leagues and now even a dynasty gem in one spot is fully operational inside sleeper right now. And then when you're a nerd herd member, you get that full access to that. And remember, you also want to download the dynasty Nerds app because they're both in there. Check it out. Check our friend sleeper, check out a DFS, use that promo code nerd. Get your whole estate. <laughs> yep. All right, let's get one, maybe two all, more. We'll see. Right. See how much more we can get. Uh, let's go. Let's go to, this one here, Kyron Williams. Kyron Williams, we, we talked about him quite a bit in the last show. This should be a quick one. Is he a top five dynasty back? I'm going to give you my dynasty running backs, how I have them ranked in order. Okay. Until I get to Kyron Williams. Okay. Is he top five? <clears throat> I have it. B. John Robinson. Okay. Brees Hall. Christian McCaffrey. Wait a minute. You got Brees above Christian McCaffrey? Yes. Age related. I do too. Age yeah. related, obviously. Then Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, obviously it's age. <laughs> of course. Obviously. Jameer Gibbs. I'm going to give Christian McCaffrey the rest of this. We have season. identical lists. So the far. rest of the Jonathan season. Taylor. Wait, who's above? Who's Who was fourth? All right, let me reset. Hey, Matt. No, just talking. fourth. Listen, all right? My, this, I'm doing my, my best running backs right in now. order. <laughs> B. John Robinson. Yeah. Brees Hall. Yep. Christian, Christian McCaffrey. McCaffrey. I just didn't hear four. Jameer Gibbs. Okay, Gibbs. Jonathan Taylor. Taylor. Okay, I got those guys flip flop. Devon Achan. Uh huh. Kyron Williams. We have the identical top seven. Really? Identical. I'm what? like trying to figure out if I'm looking at the wrong list. We have the identical top seven. Wow. That's my top seven. Who'd you have at eight? Um, Saquon Barkley. I would have to look in my list. I just okay. got my seven. Yeah, I got Saquon. I got Saquon above Kyron. I, I have I, Saquon above Kyron. I don't. I have Saquon <laughs> a decent amount lower. Uh, I've I have ETN at eight. I have Brees at one. Uh, but all that to be said, yeah, I have, ET, I have ETN at eight. 
I have Saquon at nine. Okay, that, that's uh, where we finally differ. Kenneth Walker at 10, Tajay Spears at 11, Josh Jacobs at 12, DeAndre Swift at 13, Whoa. James Cook at 14. Spears at 11? We, we, we finally, we finally I differ. I sure do, buddy. Uh, I sure do. That's bold. I have I have Kenneth Walker at nine. So we have that identical top eight. That's wild. I should probably. So anyway, my, my Kyron, Kyron Williams is at, is at running back eight for me right okay. now. Okay. But he's creeping. You know what I mean? He right. keeps going up that list every time he's out there performing. He's got another shot here in the playoffs against Detroit to to, to prove me wrong and go up even higher on this list. But I got Deva- Devon A. Chan right above him and then Skate Saquon above him as well. Okay. But other than that, my my list looks the same as your guys. Very similar. Am I too low on A. Chan? <laughs> So it, I, I put top five every because every time A Chan is on the field, he's <clears throat> I, he's chunking off yards. Always, yeah, every time he's. I'm, I, I, I was saying to Jess, yeah. like it's redundant. If Jonathan Taylor didn't look so good his last game, I'd have A Chan ahead of him. <laughs> and you can make a strong argument. And honestly, this is probably the closest. I feel like I could almost put the top seven in a bag, mix them up, and pull them out, and I would feel decent about it either way. Like Bijan. Has all the upside in the world, mm-hmm. but he just looked okay as a rookie. I don't think he looked as good as we hoped. Usage. Didn't, didn't look like Brees Hall. I yeah. think we're all going to get to see what all these guys on the Atlanta Brees Hall's offense catching yeah. are. Ten balls finally. a game. Bre- Brees Hall, yeah, the, his PPR the value. That, went that's up. a question. Cr- Cr- Brees or Bijan? And we didn't talk about this at all. I mean, we didn't talk about any of the firings, right? I mean, no. we, we kind of glanced we, over. Are we, we going to? Oh, we might tomorrow. Are, are, we, gonna, are you guys going to talk about that on the Nerder? Okay. Yeah, Nerder show? Then I'll save that. Yeah, we might. Yeah. We'll see you there. Okay. Uh, but, yeah. I, I love talking coaches. I might be there. Gibbs, Taylor, HN. Like, I, Kyron, I don't feel like Kyron is far below any of those guys. Yeah. So okay. it, it is a really interesting. So group here's right a now. question: of those seven, not your seven, because obviously <clears throat> flip Saquon and Kyron. So you, sure, you match ours right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of those seven, because you're right, it is pretty close. Which one do you feel that like the lead? Like, like if you had it, the one that you got, you'd be like, uh, I wish I had somebody else. Saquon, out. No, you take Saquon Saquon's out. Saquon's out. He Sorry. said. So maybe that should be. Saquon's Maybe Taylor. That's who mine was. Age a little bit there. He, but he also is like, finally getting a little bit older. He was always the young guy for a while, and uh-huh. now he's getting a little bit on the older side. He's, 20, 20, 20, he's 25 feeling. years old in zero months. So he's, <laughs> he's exactly 25. So he's young. Yeah. But he's just the one that's been like the up and down guy. It's kind of like. According like, to our player. He's been card, banged yeah. up injuries, every single Injuries year. and uh, contract stuff. Those to get better. He just got a contract, so it does kind of lock him up a little bit more. But like the, right. I'm, I'm the same with you. Like. Again, these are my top guys, so I want all yeah. of them. But like, if I had to get – that's the one I got out of the bag. I'd be like – even though I haven't ranked ahead of HN and Kyron, I'm like, oh, I wish I got HN. Right. That so, means you need to change that. I do. <laughs> yeah, you might, I mean, have to, just, you might have to put them at seven. That just means you need to change it. Right? But all, all that to say, it, it is really interesting to see how much Kyron's jumped. And he's – I mean, he's 23 years old. He's still very, very young. Yeah. He's done a lot of good things, and who would have – we would have thunk it, but uh, another guy that's just a great fit for what Sean McVay wants guys to do. Next question. Next question. Uh, we'll have to pull it from the phone now because the uh, the old iPad died on me. The old iPad. Uh, Pussy foot <clears throat> iPad. Let's let's get to let's, is let's CD Lamb a, now a tier tight end? one a, t- a, a tier one tight end. He's my dynasty wide receiver two Lamb. overall. <laughs> I put him. At, I bumped him this week ahead of Jamar Chase. Do, do I have met too. It's consistency, dude. Jamar Chase still again. Any reason anybody wants to throw out at me and they want to give me all arguments, he still not finishes as a Read top Read it and weave. Guy. Where's he at? Yeah, me too. Number Bumped two. Him. Number two for go. me too. All right, let's do this one last. So it was easy. What players do we worry most about their teams moving on from? I gave a couple examples. We don't have to use those ones. I know, but uh, I'm not worried about any of those guys. You're not worried about any of those guys? I'm not, I'm not worried about... Chino's hanging on by life support in Dynasty. Okay, so that would mean I would be worried if I had him. Uh, no, because I think if you have him, you understand what you have. <laughs> I'm not worried. Like, you wouldn't be worried. You know what I put down? Joe Flacco. <laughs> Sean Watson, you mean then? No, I'm worried he's going to leave my life. And I'm gonna, uh. Here's No, I swear to God, my worry is that Joe Flacco takes us far. Deshaun Watson's a quarterback next year and doesn't look as good as Joe Flacco. That's a legitimate concern. So that worry, that, that you, legitimately worries me. I'm like, oh, my gosh. like that, Rich, that's what's going to happen. What do you mean? Pipe I mean, down. Daniel Heartbreaker. Jones could be in this category. Ooh, Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones that could category. easily be another yeah. one. No, no else is on there. 
Joe Mixon kind of makes that list for me. Like him not leaving the Bengals. Make that like, list. Makes me, like they're like, ah, oh, just stay, what stay about, where you are, baby. Justin what about Fields? Keenan Allen or Mike Williams? Either one both, of those guys. Both of those guys. The Chargers right now sitting around $35 million over the cap. New oh, head and coach. New, yeah. new head coach. Both those guys are old. Both of them, they can save money. Yeah, uh, but Keenan wins no matter where. Keenan's just, he I wins. I feel like Keenan will be back. Yeah, But no, even if he went somewhere else, though, like he's his route runner, like he wins with route runner. They can save about mean? $20 million by cutting either one, like each. Maybe they restructure. On either one of those he's guys. Thir- How old is he? 31. 30, he's 30. He'll be 32 next year, and, and Mike Williams will be 30. He's still looking good when he's on the Still crushing. Yep. So I, I would expect one of those guys, if not both those guys, <clears throat> I, they can't move on from both of them. They, they wanted to. That's why they drafted Quentin <laughs> but Johnson. They can't. But they and can't. there's a lot of rumors that they're going to take like Malik Neighbors at like. They should. They have like what, pick six? Like, I think that would be good for Johnston. I think he needs to be a number two. Or yeah, and then you have to pick that fifth year option, get that turd out of there. I was going to say, is that bathroom, t- is that bathroom code number two? Because that's what I see him as. Man. Or rough. or they take Brock Bowers. Maybe. That's they, what I would. I mean, they could take a good tight end. They could use a tight end. For but sure. all, all of that, we don't we don't necessarily have to get into all the specifics. But that's one of these things in the offseason that I like to start doing is what what guys have a real yeah. danger in plummeting in value. Yeah, yeah. What guys really could could just fall off the face of the earth. Because they the team drafts somebody, trades for somebody, whatever. So it's just a helpful exercise. Jared and I will be talking about some of this kind of stuff when we do our off season breakdowns uh, for uh, the and s- some of this stuff. We're talking will, dynasty, and th- and some of this stuff will be wrapped into the show about um, coaches. I mean, because absolutely, they're, you know, obviously when coaches move, things <clears> change. <throat> you know, uh, Ben Johnson, Detroit Lions. I mean, he, he's probably going to get a head coaching job, right? I put that in my notes. Yeah. Uh, for the sh- that show is like, how worried are we right. about Sam Laporta, Amon Ross St. Brown, and Jared Goff if Ben Johnson leaves? That's in my, yeah. he, stay, in my notes he stayed last year because he knew he was going to get, if not better, like the same. He'll get, if he'll not get to choose yep. whatever team he wants. I also yes. bumped Amon Ra St. Brown in my rankings ahead of AJ Brown. I can't blame you there. <laughs> He's so consistent. I, I did it. that wide receiver four. Yep, I did it. <clears throat> Over Garrett Wilson, too. Oh, I, mean, yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I don't know if I'd be Wilson. proud of that, but all right. I mean, I have AJ Brown right <laughs> after I'm on St. Brown, so it's still tier, like upper tier, but I moved, I finally moved him up. We should do no, a, those guys like, are those guys are season ranking show. I don't, we could do that. <clears throat> we're, gonna be do a we're, doing a, we're doing a startup. Oh yeah. Uh, mock Start, in a little, couple weeks. We'll talk about right so I think next week's show, we're going to do uh, our dynasty two shows. We're going to do dynasty buys and dynasty sells for quarterbacks and running backs. Yeah. And then we'll do wide receivers and tight ends the next the week. following week. And then we're going to do a mock super flex might up mock draft startup with us for, um, and kind of go through that. That's we the plan stands. Maybe we'll do that before the show with the nerd. So, herd. Yeah. We'll, enjoy, we'll get some nerd herd in the score. We'll do a startup mock draft and kind of talk out our picks while we picked them. Yeah. Um, and go from there. I like it. Cool. All right. That's it. Good to be back. Uh, in the new year. I love, love these shows. If you enjoy the show, this is a perfect time for you to leave a rating and review on iTunes Please. or anywhere you leave the show. It really does help the show. Um, when you leave rating and reviews, it helps uh, bump up the algorithm, uh, whatnot. They, they all like that. It helps, you know, a lot of people are looking for Dynasty content to help them navigate the landscape. As the game grows, the user base grows. Especially and now. a lot of people need help. You know, like a lot of you that have been listening for a while, you're savvy players, right? Mm-hmm. Like, but people that don't know how to navigate the rookie uh, market, don't know what the value is for trades and whatnot. So you leaving us a rating review. One, I love to read those. It's the one thing I always checked, and I love to hear the feedback on them. Even you haters out there, it's okay. All the haters. You know? um, but I love reading those p- reviews. So take the time, leave us a rating review on that platform. We really do appreciate it. It really does help us a lot. It's one simple thing you could do. Um, I mean, shout out to the, the guy that sent us a handwritten note, or not a handwritten note. A, uh, yeah, he t- sent us a card. Sent yeah. us a card, from, uh, a, a holiday card. Yeah, huh? from Charles Evans. Yeah. Uh, got a Christmas card. How about, about how much he appreciates the show? Yeah. So shout out. I mean, well. that was like an old school review, right? Like, Which is pretty cool. Yeah. Matt's so, address is. Yeah, I got the. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. <laughs> it's social security. Now. Come on now. <laughs> So thanks to Charles Evans for uh, shouting that, uh, sending that out. And to all the Nerd Herd, uh, real excited for this 2024 and getting ahead of it right there and making this year even better than before. We're going to have some great rookie content. We're going to have tons of content getting up to that, talking Senior Bowl, talking to Combine, and then the summer shows. And then getting the 2024 season will be here before we know it. And there's only one thing to do. 
Let's go win some ships. See you next week. Adios. Watch film while you take a poo.